Hi everyone, Coach Sullivan here with MGS Coaching Football. To my subscribers, I thank you, and to those who haven't yet, I really hope you do. Just completed my 38th year coaching football. I was a defensive coordinator, but over that time, I've also been an offensive coordinator, special teams coordinator, longtime head coach. I've coached every position on our defense, offense, again, both at the collegiate and high school levels. So today, in this presentation, what I'd like to talk to you about is what we call Dime Go out of our base 3-4, and we're also called Dime Go with Stick Tag, okay? And we're going to show this to you versus 11 personnel out of both our base and our rotate tag, okay? So the key terms here are C-Crash, which is the Dime Blitz technique, since this is a Dime Go, and I'll go through this when I bring it to light in the uh, diagram, okay? What's meant by spill, bend, and cage, okay? So that's if it's run two, run away, and pass. Spill is if it's run two, bend is if it's run away, and then pass, outside cage. So again, I'll show that to you when we go bring it to light in the diagram. The lucky ringo goes to the dime. As I've said many times, if the dime doesn't know who the dime is, right, oh boy, we got bigger problems. The Louis Raja is the safeties. I'm not planning on getting into the uh, coverage, zone blitz coverage trio. So here we start. Non-subscribe is subscribe. So you can go to the zone blitz coverage on the whiteboard. What reduce means, that's the defensive end of the call side. Pinches B, nose, pinches A to the call. Okay, we just say reduce. That's built into the blitz family. So again, not subscribe is if you hit that subscribe button, doesn't cost anything. You can see their Go Family introduction presentation. And then the stick tag. Right? So the whole procedure, whoever has the responsibility of signaling in the offensive personnel and who the defensive personnel is going to match, because in this particular case it could be nickel. All right. The front. The blitz call, and whenever I clap, boom, the defense is turning facing the O. And then the stick tag simply, or let me start off with the rotate. Okay, and that tells our defense that we're in the rotate mode versus everything. Okay, so whatever the per offensive personnel was, whatever our defensive personnel is, the, the rotate tag kicks in, okay? And then if it were to be a stick, I'm not going to do it versus with the rotate, excuse me, but we just go bing, bing, okay, bing. So it becomes a dime go stick. So anytime, right, <clears throat> non-subscribers. So now let me start to bring all of this to light here in the diagram. So up top, I have us in our base mode versus 11-gun Dallas pistol. That's two by two. And on the bottom, I have the out of the rotate tag, again, versus 11-gun Dallas pistol. Okay, so the call, what I just signaled to you, 50 is our base 3-4. Dime go. Again, non-subscribers, right? We name who's going on the blitz, the go blitz, down here, dime go trio, rotate, all right? So I'm going to diagram the three defenders involved in the dime go as well as the dime go stick, and then the only thing I'm going to do with the uh, secondary and the coverage is show you what's meant by Louis Roger, the safeties, it's going to be both a Roger, but nonetheless, it's identical if it were a Lucky and a Louis, okay? And then what's meant by maybe? A little bit of a tease there for non-subscribers, but just hit that button. It doesn't cost anything, and you can see everything. All right, so let me also explain that we teach everything that we do, every movement possible, uh, out of our base 3-4, and then when we start putting in other fronts, we can also install these same blitzes out of those fronts. Okay, so yes, you may run this out of multiple fronts. 
However, I would strongly advise against trying to install DimeGo and DimeGo Stick, which we install on the same day, along with the Rover equivalent. <clears throat> I have to see another presentation. So, again, non-subscribers. Okay. <clears throat> We will, uh, I advise against trying to do this with multiple fronts in the same day because if these guys line up in different places, they're too busy focused on where they're lining up and now all of a sudden you're asking them to execute the same blitzes, right? So I personally would advise teach every blitz you have however many you have every movement etc out of whatever your base front is first and then slowly spoon feed in whatever other front you want to execute you, you in this case blitz out of okay it's just personal of preference all right so here we go okay it's a ringo because the dime's right it's a roger okay so on the snap of the ball, I'm going to also bring in the technique, which brings in the footwork and the uh, aiming points and so forth, okay? Let's first talk about defensive end reduce, call side. So whenever it's a ringo, it's going to be the stud. If it's a lucky, it's the end because those guys are left and right, right? Pinch, pinch. Okay, so if you want more about the techniques, Again, not subscribe is you're going to have to hit that button. Okay, snap of the ball. C crash. So first level aiming point. I'm just going to abbreviate AP aiming point, right? Butt of the tackle. Butt of the tackle. Snap of the ball. Screw down. Makes him hot over two. Rotate middle. Okay, there it is. That's what happens with... Ringo Roger, I'm not talking any more about that. Maybe these two guys combo the running back. Okay, so that's it. Boom, done. So now, right, C-Crash, Dime Blitz. It's what we call digging crossover, digging crossover, okay? So in this case, when he's detached, he has a staggered stance, okay? So the dig and crossover is on the inside, of the which is also the up foot. You lift that heel, you dig off of that toe, and cross over with the outside of the back foot. You will literally pivot off that up inside foot, so it's very easy to do. If a kid can't do that, most likely they can't play the position anyway. And again, as I said, for us, this more often than not, it's a fifth defensive back. We're in some form of nickel. We do have outside linebackers many years, so we could play in what we just simply call our base personnel on defense. They can also execute that, so that's the footwork, okay? The aiming point is the butt of the tackle, and you're reading that. We say, read it on the run, baby. Read it on the run, okay? First level aiming point. Second level aiming point. Again, I'm abbreviating that AP. One yard in front. So in this case, when it's the shotgun, your aiming point second level is a yard in front of the quarterback. Okay, yard in front. So if this were okay, a run two, what's meant by spill? Okay. If this happened to have been a two-back set, you would be spilling the kickout block of the fullback. That puts you on a course. As an example, run two. Say it's inside zone to the two-man surface. That puts you on a course right now to collision at the at the point of where he's trying to run the football, B to A. So maybe you force the back to bounce. Okay, a spill course, run two. Forces the bounce if you don't have a massive collision, which you may very likely have, okay? That's the spill. The bend, all right? The bend, the more likely scenario. This is one of the big reasons why we go blitz from, from the uh, what we call the backside. The offensive tendencies are 
They're a tight end oriented team out of 11 personnel. Dime blitz, because he'd be to the lizard rip in this case, which would be over here. That's the bend. When you're on the back side, so the run's away, you bend and chase. We do not ask our go blitzer, who's a sea crash technique, to also play quarterback boot. That puts him in conflict. Don't do it. We assign somebody else to play the quarterback boot. So that's what's meant by the bend, okay? There it is. Bend and chase. And that first level aiming point of the tackle's butt puts you in that course. So you couple by the time you get to here, you know whether or not you run to or away. So the more likely scenario is he's going to be that much close to the line of scrimmage and they go two intersecting lines, that whole mathematical approach, right? We make many plays when we do the execute a go blitz from the backside. Okay, so build in your tendencies through your film study. Okay, and then go back to, boy, this gets messy fast. Go back to, right, first level aiming point, butt of the tackle. Well, that butt showing pass, now that kicks in outside cage. It's automatic. Everything is read on the run. Read on the run, right? Be a football player, especially when you're detached. Okay, he's five yards away. His inside toes and the heels of the DM. We don't hedge. We don't tip our hand. We don't turn in on the snap. No, no, we pivot, right? Dig and drive. Dig and crossover, excuse me, right? From being detached. Because otherwise, if you hedge and show it, these guys have alerts. They'll tell the quarterback, change the play. Wah! Right? Chaos. Don't want to do that. So that's what all this is about. Boom. 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 Look, we did it all already. Okay? Now, when you add the stick tag to it. So I'm going to do it in black. Dime go stick. The only difference here is these two guys. Call side DN now executes what we call a stick, which forces the nose A away. I know a lot of programs call that a long stick. We try and eliminate non-necessary verbiage. That's the only time we execute what we call a stick, which is a two-gap move. In this case, it's a reduction into the ball. I know a lot of term teams call it a long stick. No, we just call it stick, and that's what it means to us. Nothing changes for the dime. See, that's the change right there. All right, the only change would be, again, non-subscribers, hit that button. Lineback Inside linebacker on the side of the blitz now becomes what we call a 31 technique, or he's got the B-gap play side. Boom, done. That's it. Okay? So now down here, when we go through the whole procedure, when we finish up telling our guys we're to rotate, that brings the extra guy into the box already without blitzing. That's the dime, and we've done that enough and not blitzed them that they don't even think he's going to blitz. Okay, so which kicks into our single high mode. Again, not subscribers, hit that button, and you get all of this in my playlists. Okay, so <clears throat> we're in our one high look because we're in rotate, and that's all we have to do, right? These three guys are the only three affected. Boom, done. That's all I'm going to say, non-subscribers. Okay, so everything stays the same now, right? Safety's already up, one by eight, Ike, but on the snap, he's still going to screw down. He doesn't have to rotate, but they still say Roger because, man, I make them. <laughs> I make them because if you don't make them every single time, there's a pretty good chance in the heat of battle they'll forget, and then they don't do it. Okay, and I'm not a believer in osmosis. I never let a kid say, well, I thought it. Well, that's congratulations. How do I know that? Right? It's in here. It doesn't mean squat. You got to say it. So we make our kids say it and scream it all the time. I don't care if we've got a fourth, fifth year player. I've never had a six. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I had one time in my 38 year career, I had a six year guy once. Multiple injury red shirt, two times. 
38 years, only once, right? So even then, made the guy scream it. So there you go. So now everything stays the same, except it's that much closer. So to answer this question, when he's on the line of scrimmage and rotate like that, his toes are even, so it still doesn't change anything. That's just the inside foot, not staggered. He lifts that inside heel, cross over, right? Pivots on the inside foot. There it is. Boom, done. It just happens instantly. Reduce. That's a lot of heat immediately right there on that surface. That's a lot of heat, okay? He doesn't have to rotate, as I said. I already went over that, right? Boom, done. And so even with the immediacy of this, it's still easy to read. Run to, run away. Very easy to read, okay? And so the immediacy... That ends up being the course because what you end up getting on an inside zone away, in case you're wondering about the collisions there, right? The surface is moving that way, so they don't end up necessarily penetrating like that. And if they did, great anyway, okay? And so that helps shorten the bend, okay? And again, the boot off of that, we that's built in. Your backside, you bend and chase, that's it, boom, done. On that quarterback boot, he will never be responsible for that. So don't let your guy ever do it because they do it. They have success. That's going to take away from their aggressiveness, and now they're going to think they're right and you're wrong, right. Don't let it. The few times it's happened and kids gotten aware of that, that's exactly what I said to him. You're damn lucky because that's not your call. Okay, I mean, that's it, boom, done. Kind of heck, you have to get into Coach Meany. What are you going to do, right? It's all part of it. Okay? So then now add the stick tag to it. And again, I apologize. Boy, this gets messy real, real quick. Stick tag, DN call side, stick A, forces nose, A away. There it is. Boom, done. So honestly, how to rotate when we're facing teams that have that massive tight end tendency. To run the football, we tend to make it uh, the stick tag is the first priority rather than just regular go, reduce, because we want these guys really moving, trying to beat, get a jump on the plays that are being run to that tight, especially to big inside zone teams, inside zone to the tight end. We love to run the dime go. In this case, it's a dime go with the stick tag. Okay? So, again, to recap, C crash, first level is the butt of the tackle, second level, yard in front, runs to you, you spill it, run away, it's bend and chase, and you'll figure that out really fast, okay? Pass, especially the first level key, it's going to be setting, all right? And then, honestly, if it's an RPO, so you think it's a run, then react, go get it. Go get it, we'll... we'll compensate for you no worries okay, if they're doing a good job in play action or rpo and the offensive line is blocking like it's run and it's away from you just bend and chase we don't get into making it so the kid well you know you got to be careful because well coach i what i mean i'm not a mind reader it looked like run so that's what we tell the kids it looked like run to you bend and chase it so you'll know the difference trust me when, you know, you got the tackle, the guard, and everybody's high hat, and the kid's selling you that, well, then they just, you're not obviously reading the surface because, look, son, <laughs> look at the surface. You still believe that they were show, there was a run? So that's where if you can uh, film your practices, you may not be able to film everything. I get that, depending on, you know, where you are in, in your programs. But if you can film – you know, like inside run, seven on seven team. So you can film the game plan as it's installed and you tag it in the calls. That would be very helpful because we use it not in any other reason than to be educational. Help coach up your guys. Make the points. Okay? So as I said at the beginning, I thank my subscribers and to those who haven't. I certainly hope I made the point. I really hope you do. 
And to everyone at this point, please, any questions, reach out to me at CoachMJSullivan at gmail.com. I'm starting to get a little bit more in that respect. I mean it or I wouldn't say it, so please reach out to me, okay? Because I'd love to talk football with you.